So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up two tools, one in each hand. I'm going to use the black pen in my dominant hand. I am right-handed and I'm going to use the pink pen in my left hand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw simultaneously. So I'll just demonstrate the technique here. So what you do is you, um, you start observing. Um, so I think I'm going to move that out and I'm going to just look at, his, at this eye. So you start observing and basically what you do is you, well, what I do is I move my dominant hand and I am sort of observing with the dominant hand. And then this hand or pen just flops around. There's another way of doing it. Some people work with two hands where the, the one pen chases the other. And you might find that an easier technique to, to work with. Okay, I'm just going to see this. This actually looks like it's got a little bit more control. So the one is, like I say, drawing and just letting this flop around. And then the other is a little bit more control where the pens chase each other. Now, the whole idea of this <coughs> technique is that it is supposed to be spontaneous and quite loose. And you're almost just meant to feel the shapes that you are drawing. So going up his nose, down to those lips. little chin in and try not to pick your pen up and hopefully these marks should add some interest into the piece at the end of the piece Just feel your way around that drawing. If you had to look at my head, you'd see that I'm spending a lot of time looking at the reference and not too much time at my drawing. I often tell my students that artists look more than normal people. We actually observe a lot more. And I can already see the proportions are out, but I'm not worrying about that too much. If you're hearing any screeching sounds, um, we have monkeys that come through our grounds and it's the monkeys that are screeching at one another. So, um, yeah, if there is anything weird coming through, that's what it is. So this is the second pass and I'm going with my ballpoint pen the big ballpoint pen and I'm just looking a little bit more closely. The technique that I use is generally a hatched mark. Um, it does become a cross hatched mark at times, but I, um, you can see I'm drawing lines down to, to measure where the features are fitting in. Um, well, as I was saying, um, I tend towards a, a hatched mark and it tends to go from the left to the right um, in a diagonal. And I think that's just habit or it's the way I feel comfortable when drawing. I have a student who works in a very loose scribbly mode like this in pen and um, when I watch her drawing, it she becomes incredibly relaxed. Um, I think she's quite a 
a girl who suffers from quite a lot of stress um, and she completely relaxes when she, she's drawing. She doesn't draw in a, a, a realistic or naturalistic mode and um, her portraits become quite abstract but it almost becomes a meditation for her which is quite wonderful to to watch.